I want to welcome everyone again today to another short demo on Creo Parametric. In this demo, we're going to look at assemblies and creating assemblies. Several methods you could use inside of Creo to create assemblies. One could be top down, the other could be bottom up. We could also start with a skeleton, meaning in the model tray on the left, we could have placeholders for assemblies, subassemblies, components, and then we just fill in those elements as we design. In this example here, we're going to draw these or create these bottom up. <clears throat> so we're going to create all of our components outside of the assembly and then assemble them after they're created. To speed things in this example, I've already created the actual components, so all we have to do is place those. So let's start with the assembling of components. In this example, we'll start with the first part, which will be the body part. And again, we're going to use our 77 model race car, and this being a component from the race car, in this actual example. So the first piece I'm placing technically doesn't have anything to constrain to, so what I'm going to do is apply what's called the default constraint. Really, it's coordinate system to coordinate system in this case. And then to accept that, I can either green check mark on the, mo on the ribbon across the top, or I can just middle mouse click, illustrating one of the shortcut keys for Creo. Now, let's place our second component, in this case, the shaft. So I'll go select our shaft, open our shaft. And what I'll notice now when I'm placing components, I have a three-dimensional drag handle, a tool, to allow me to rotate around a various axis allowing me to translate, pull along one of my axis lines, even to drag or translate along a plane. So a variety of different ways you can use this tool to reorient your shape. Now, for the placement of this component into the body part, your, the gray component on your screen, different types of constraints can be used. One, we could look at static constraints, not allowing motion or movement. Or maybe you wanted to show or allow motion or movement, we could look at connections. So there's different types, different options of uh, different types of constraints and connections you could use in your assemblies, either be static connections or connections to allow motion. Now, if you're allowing motion, you could further enhance those into mechanisms. Now, we're going to, not going to actually use connections and mechanisms in this example. These are going to be primarily static constraints. Now, when I'm assembling the shaft component into the body part, I could use a specific type of constraint. Well, in this example here, I'm not going to use a specific constraint. I'm going to use the automatic constraint, and I'm going to let Creo decide, in this case, based on surfaces or points or axes or datums I select, as to what's the best constraint to use. So on my shaft part, I'm going to align center axis to center axis. So I'm going to select a cylindrical surface of the shaft, and then I'll select the cylindrical shirt surface of the body part, and it'll align axis to axis. Now my degree of freedom is now limited, in this case, to only two different types of movement. One, translating along the axis, and two, rotating about the axis. Now I'm going to add another constraint. And it's something as simple as moving over the existing shaft part and selecting a new surface. Now I want to actually select the bottom of this extrusion on the shaft top to near its head. I could rotate the actual model. But in this example, I'm going to use the query selection options inside of Creo just by right-clicking in an area, and it'll cycle through those different surfaces. With the surface pre-highlighted that I want, just select it by left-clicking, and now I've chosen that, in this case, surface. And then I'll do is select another surface that I'm creating the actual constraint with. Now, I see the tag appear for the type of constraint that I have applied. Also, it can be seen on the placement tab at the very top. These constraints can be removed. You can delete those. You can even remove the surfaces that are actually being constrained. You can flip it. I can disable it. So there's a variety of things you can do on the placement tab. The same thing can be done on the tag. So if I were to, in this case, double click the coincident tag, I could change that to maybe a distance. So now I have a drag handle that I can add a distance between those two surfaces, or I can just in this case, double click the dimension to change that. So anytime I see a tag, I can double click the tag and change its actual constraint in this case. Now, if I look at, in this case, this part, I have two constraints. The third constraint would be the revolution of this part. Now, if you really didn't want to use that, you could do what's, or actually activate what's called assuming the third constraint, meaning the position this part is in right now, it'll stay locked in that position. But, and that, that would be useful, let's say, if you're putting in a bolt or putting in a screw that you really don't care about how it's rotated. 
But let's not do that in this example. Let's actually apply a third constraint because what I would really like to do is make the flat surface of the shaft on a 45 degree angle to the front surface of the body part. So let's add a new constraint. So again, I can go to the placement tab or just to illustrate Creo's shortcuts, I can just right click, choose new constraint, and now choose my mating surfaces or my paired surfaces. In this case, I now have an angle constraint. I see the angle offset tag. I could change that tag from angle offset, maybe to parallel. Maybe I'd like it to be normal, 90 degrees. We're going to leave it at angle offset, so that way I can actually change the angle in this case to what I originally said, to a 45 degree angle. Now with those three constraints made, on the dashboard across the top, it's stating fully constrained. To complete this, you can green check mark or just middle mouse click to accept the value. Again, illustrating one of Creo's shortcut keys. Now in the next example, let's align the actual cover plate. Again, what I'm going to do for this example is use the same technique. I'm going to use the automatic constraint and let Creo decide what is the best, in this case, constraint to use. So I'll start just by selecting mated holes. So I'll do surface to surface on one hole. Now I don't technically have to select new constraint. I can simply just keep selecting. And then I'll query select the bottom to the top. Now again, there's my distance tag, but I just want to change distance in this case to coincident, locking the two together and doing all of those functions really without going to the dashboard, really without moving my eyes from what the part I'm looking at or moving the mouse from where I'm at. And then middle mouse click to accept it. So again, very easy, very intuitive to use. Now for the next example, I'm going to put the handle on the shaft and there's a keyway cut out on the handle and there's going to be a keyway cut out on the shaft. And I want to align those. We're going to use the technique in this example by aligning by datum plane. So I see there's a plane already placed on the shaft. The incoming handle will also have a plane on it. So let's go to assemble the actual shaft to the handle. So we'll grab the handle. Again, the handle will come in. I can drag the handle into position or relative to where you want, rotating it around. Uh, now, I don't technically have to do this for every example, but for certain illustrations, I will. And again, I'll select the mated surface to another surface. And now I see the coincident constraint, but it's floating. What I really want to do is lock that on top of the shaft, mating up or matching up, in this case, those draft angles. So I'm going to choose centered. Now, the second step, or my next step, is I really want to align those keyways. I can see the keyway on the handle. I can also see the keyway in light blue on the shaft. So let's create a new constraint. Again, I'm right-clicking, illustrating the method of shortcuts, in this case, from the right-click menu. And I'm just going to simply, in this case, made up both of the actual datums. So I'm going to choose the datum for the actual arm, in this case, the handle and then the datum for the shaft. Now again, it's showing me an offset tag, but I'm going to change that to coincident. Locking those two together, aligning those keyways, and if I look at the very top of my screen on the dashboard, it's fully constrained. Again, middle mouse click to accept this. Now let's say we want to place in a few bolts. And in these bolts, we would like to um, place several of those at one time. You can use a couple different techniques. We're going to place one first, and then we'll come in and actually use another technique for repeating. But let's just drop in one bolt right now initially. So I'm going to go to Assemble. I'm going to select our bolt, and I'm going to open it. Now let's say this assembly was a very, very large assembly, and the bolt was very, very small. Now technically it's not that small here. I can see the bolt right now. But what I could do is turn on an accessory window. What the accessory window will do is allow me to show the part that's actually being inserted into the actual assembly, allowing me to select surfaces on it and also surfaces on the actual assembly itself without having to zoom in and zoom out. So in this example here, I'm going to use our same method of constraints, the automatic constraints, selecting a side surface on the bolt and then a mating surface on the part itself. Same thing, I'm going to query select the bottom surface of the head of the bolt and then the mating surface on the, in this case, um, a part being assembled. Now the tag again says normal. I'm going to change that tag in this example from normal to, in this case, be coincident. Now I can either do it in the window or, if you want, just to show an example of this, I can go to the placement tab and on the placement tab change it here. So you have a variety of different techniques, a variety of different ways on how to actually 
assemble this element into your assembly. Now for the other example, let's actually put in the one other cover plate inside of the assembly. So we'll actually add the plate. Again, it's going to be brought in. I could use my 3D dragging tool to actually rotate and drag. I could use this actual accessory window. In this example, I'm going to turn it off. And once again, I'm just going to mate surface to surface aligning the holes to holes and then I'll query select the back surface to the front surface changing this distance tag to a coincident tag and then middle mouse click to accept that placed within the assembly. Now for the bolt I could come in and actually start to assemble the bolt again and again and again and again but in this technique what I really would like to do is use a function to allow me to just repeat the assembly of the bolt itself adding those bolts with the surfaces that I choose or I select. So a variety of methods can be used in this case. What I'm going to do is use the repeat command. Now again, I'm right clicking illustrating Creo's ability to have a lot of functions at your right click. So I'm going to choose repeat. In this case the bolt is selected. And I'm going to grab both of those constraints that I used when I applied the bolt. The one to the shaft and the one underneath the head of the bolt. And then what we're going to do is click Add, and now what I'm doing is basically going in and creating new bolts by just picking those two mated surfaces. So what I'll do is I'll go to one, and I'll pick a surface, 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 and it's as simple as that. Just, just keep going and going and going. It doesn't matter the plane I'm on. It doesn't matter the components. It's mating up and creating those new bolts based on the original constraints. Also, too, as you're placing those, the original bolt will highlight what surface you're supposed to choose or what surface you're mating. And when I'm done, I can confirm that. And now I've added those additional bolts within my assembly, and I see them in the actual model tree on the left, ultimately showing up in your bill of materials. Again, multiple ways to create, in this case, static constraints uh, in this, in, inside of uh, the assembly inside of Creo Parametric. Again, very easy, very flexible to use, a multitude of ways um, that you can actually assemble your different components together. Thanks again.